finish sanding all the parts. I have my purple power here. I'm just gonna dunk my parts in and let it sit overnight. Now when you're handling this stuff, do not use your bare hands. It's, it's concentrated and this will peel your skin. So I'm just gonna drop my parts in here carefully. Try not to splatter on myself. Make sure I have everything in there. Again, do not handle this with your bare hands. Be careful. And this will sit overnight. Okay, last I left you, I had placed my parts in the cleaning fluid and it's been good overnight. The parts should be pretty good and soaked. So again, wear a glove when you're handling this I'm gonna take these parts out of the out of my liquid and just put them in some clean water. The regular tap water is fine. And what this does is this kind of rinses this the rinses off the the purple power. I'm gonna set them in my ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna fill the water up to about the max there. I'm just gonna make sure these sit decently. I'm going to set the timer to max and start off. Now what this does is scrub the parts using well, using uh, sound waves. So the process could be easily done using you know a toothbrush and scrubbing my parts, but I'm entirely too lazy, so I'm going to use this method to clean my parts. Sometimes when you take the resin right out of the you know paper bags, you can feel the surface of them. And there's gonna be that oily film. You'll you'll it'll feel kind of oily or very very slick. After you've soaked this in the industrial cleaner, when you rub up against the parts, you'll notice that it doesn't feel as oily and as if um, you've, you've uh, scrubbed off the residue. So that's one of those things you need to check for when you're uh, cleaning your parts is to make sure that there's no oily residue. You know, you know that you've gotten rid of all the mold release. Once this is cleaned off, I'm gonna re remove the parts put them on a paper towel to sit overnight to dry. Now I could go ahead and 
Also, just paper dry these. But I want to get rid of all the excess water. I'm not in a hurry, so. Next step will be putting these on skewers and getting to work with the initial priming stage. So these look fairly clean. It's also nice to do after you've you know finished doing a lot of sanding. You get rid of all the sanding dust that's on the kit. Um, you notice that this clear water has turned kind of purplish because you know the the purple power has, you know, has been diluted considerably. So I'm still using gloves to handle this because. Even this amount might do some harm to my delicate skin. Like you see here, you'll see there's a pinhole, or actually an area where the resin didn't get filled properly. And also the hole that I made earlier when I pinned this, or was doing the pinning process. So, I'm going to go ahead and take care of those for that particular piece, because that will give me a chance to show you a little bit of the light curing putty. For this I'm going to have to turn the lights down so I only have my ambient light. I'm not going to get rid of this light up here. And I'm going to grab my light curing putty. Now, I like using this stuff because it's um cures very very fast and you see this process it works very very well on resin so what I'm going to do is just it comes out kind of liquidy um, it's, it should come out kind of toothpaste consistency if it's a little too liquidy you're going to have to mix it out mix it up a little bit so it should come out a little you know like toothpaste so I'm just going to Kind of stick that in there. That one part, and time to fill this area here. Now I want to make sure I cap up my putty, put it back into the box, and kind of keep it out of direct light. I'm going to bring my light down, and it's still liquidy, so I'm going to turn the light on, and this should cure within a, uh, about half a minute to a full minute. What I like to do also is, once it gets uh, maybe about a minute into this, wipe off the excess um, liquid. 
part of the solution that it sits in. So I find that while this is curing, if you get rid of, um, once it's cured, you should get rid of that liquid because it kind of messes with um, what it looks like or messes with the consistency once it's actually cured. You see the difference is this is duller versus this is. <clears throat> Set my light back up. Now I could go ahead and this is fully cured and I could go ahead and start sanding this stuff. And you can see that it sands very very well and it's already fully cured. I can use a higher grit uh, sanding stick or my higher grit sanding pad to do this. And I generally want to get rid of most of the excess putty that's around here. And then I should get to a point where I should see just the hole I filled. I should keep this up like this so I don't get resin dust on here. Good afterthoughts. And once that's sanded, you can see that that hole is filled and I can run my fingernail across this. The true check to this is to prime this and see how that looks. If it looks, you know, like there's still too much um, putty here or if it looks like it's been filled up. I'm going to go ahead and sand the rest of this piece here. And what's great about this is, comparison to other putties I've used, uh, the epoxy putties or the you know styrene-based putties. Styrene-based putties won't work on uh, on resin because they're formulated to work on styrene. But uh, I usually use, but I usually use epoxy putties for this process and the epoxy putties usually take a little too long to cure and as I'm finishing this up my ultrasonic cleaner has finished scrubbing you can see that it's filled that hole fairly nicely and go in there with some light sanding or high grit sanding and finish that up. I can run my fingernail across and shouldn't feel any defects or any bumps, resistance. So I know that this hole has been filled as well as this hole. And all within the span of uh, five minutes that my ultrasonic cleaner was running to uh, clean the parts. This is great because I could go ahead and prime uh, and check this out and if I still make mistakes let the primer you know dry up for an hour go ahead and redo this and reprime. This beats waiting on the epoxy putty to cure overnight or however long it takes to cure. Make sure there's no oily residue. Drop this here.
this is all that I need to do for cleaning my parts. And thanks for watching.